Hey guys, Uncle Steph here. So in this video, I want to give you the AI dev roadmap for 2025 in terms of what to learn, how to think about it, how to look at it. So two years ago or whatever it was when AI first hit the scene, I said that number one, AI was not going to destroy all developer jobs. Don't worry about it. It's going to take years for this to happen, if it ever happens. So it's been a couple of years. It still hasn't happened. Now we're starting to see with some of the big players like Meta and Google and Microsoft, they're starting to write more and more of their code with AI. Now, if you look at it very shallowly, you would figure, oh my God, that's the end of development. That's over, it's over, everybody, it's over. I don't look at it that way. I just see it as a change. Now, I have seen these changes before, as I said. In the 1990s, when the web technology started taking shape and started taking over, Old school, thick client development like VB6, building apps for Windows or building apps for Mac OS, got pushed into the margins. It's normal. So the people who adopted the new technologies, as I did, had a huge opportunity and some did very, very, very well. And so I see AI and AI development and I would throw in low-code, no-code platforms into that as well. I see that as the future. So there's huge opportunity, first of all. Just embrace it. I think those developers who learn to use AI in their development uh, workflows are going to do fantastically well. Let me just give you a couple of bullet points. How do you proceed if you're a total beginner? This is what you need to do to get into development in 2025 and looking forward, given what I just said. So if you are an experienced developer, you'll be able to jump on uh, along this track. You see what I mean? So number one, even if you're using AI, you have to uh, learn your fundamentals of development. I always recommend the web stack because uh, there's so many more jobs in web-based development because whether you're doing traditional web apps or you're going to you're going to deliver AI-driven solutions. They're going to be delivered on a web platform. Now, some might say, oh, the, the AIs are going to build these things. The AI is going to write the code. Might be probably in the future at some point, I would imagine. But you have to understand, if you're a noob, this is for noobs. If you're writing web apps, you're building web apps, a big part of the job has nothing to do with writing actual code, like literally nothing to do with writing actual code. It's that profile. Uh, I would say maybe 80% of the work, depending, 80% of the work is has, uh, there's no coding involved. It's planning things out. It's organizing uh, the structure of the website or the web app, figuring out what the website or the web app needs, uh, looking at uh, you know, looking at things like hosting. Do you go to a cloud? Do you go to AWS? Uh, do you need to register register a domain name? Do you implement with a framework like a Laravel or an ExpressJS, or are you going to be just using a content management system like a WordPress or a Drupal? There's so many business choices and technology choices that have to be made that a suit that a business owner who, I don't know, let's say, I, use, I like using the coffee shop example. You got somebody who owns a coffee shop and makes custom brews and blends. They're not going to know these, not going to even know the answer, excuse me, they're not going to even know what questions to ask, let alone the answers. That's where you come in as a professional. The code that is written it is just a tool. When I first started building web apps and websites, the languages we use were quite different. The technology we use were quite different. How we deployed was quite different. So a lot of the skill sets of the early 90s became uh, antiquated and almost almost useless by the mid by the early 2000s even. I had a friend of mine who was like one of the top web guys in the uh, mid to late 90s and then he took a few years off came back in 2001 or so and he was astounded about how different it was html had changed now css was a thing uh, client-side coding and reliant reliance on javascript was a thing 
in the early days, JavaScript was like, uh, it was there, but nobody relied on it because uh, all kinds of browser issues and stuff. I won't get into now. Anyway, so you have to look at the AI technologies as this new abstraction layer, this new thing to do. So again, going back to the roadmap, if you're a total beginner, you learn your foundations, I would pick the web stuff, HTML5, a little CSS3, a little responsive, a uh, little bit of JavaScript, understand the server client model, request response cycle, so that when you do work with AI, you understand what's going on. Right? The, you know, the worst thing you can do, I've talked to a few founders, a few different companies, where, where one dude put together something with AI from A to Z, and it just, they couldn't get it to work off of the um, development machine. They couldn't, because they, they didn't understand the code, they didn't understand what's going on. So that's an example where if you have an understanding of software development, uh, you'll be able to work this way. Now, that being said, here's a strategy which I'm gonna talk about more uh, in another video I'm gonna do on the AI startup roadmap, is that AI, as it is today, I'm recording this May, uh, was it 15th, 2025, it's very good, but it's not perfect. And if you make the mistake of saying, build this whole app from start to finish, uh, it could work, but it could also cause a lot of problems. It could be all kinds of bugs and problems buried deep into the code. And it could be a very problematic to figure out what's going on there. So architecturally speaking, I think modern developers today, we're gonna to have to learn to build more modular code more granular code so that you have your, you should be doing this to begin with, but I think you have to take it to a next level. And so you have a chunk of code that does this, a chunk of code that does that, a chunk of code that does this. And then what you do is you can tell the AI, you work on this chunk here and it does this, and then work on this chunk here, it does that, and so on. Why do you do that way? You do that way so that when you have a small, uh, a more, fine-grained chunk of code that uh, the AI is working on, it's a lot easier to manage that and to understand that. It's a lot easier for it to be fixed, as opposed to if you just took all those different components and then you had the AI just do it all in one big sweeping, uh, one big sweeping pass, that's going to be problematic for you. That's going to be much more difficult to maintain, and it's going to be it's gonna be less likely, at least for now, that the AI is gonna be able to do a good job with that. So if you, as the software professional, if you uh, segment, chunk up your application into logical components, and then you can point AIs at different aspects of it, you're gonna have much better results. Much better results. So again, let me emphasize for people who are scared, I don't see AI as replacing developers. I see AI and low-code, no-code solutions as changing the way we develop apps. It's going to make us hyper-productive. So we're in a transition period now where people are not being hired where they would have been otherwise because of AI, or people are being fired because, again, AI. But this is a transitional period. This will change. This will settle down. And then once companies and individuals figure out how AI fits into it, how it makes you hyper productive in your software development game, then they'll be able to start hiring people, people who know AI and no coding and no development. Uh, then they will be able to, then the new jobs will start coming about because they'll know how to position them in the, uh, in the workflows, if that makes any sense. I think in the end, what you're going to get is... Um, far more software that is far, uh, much quicker iterations, much quicker iterations. So instead of GTA 6 coming out after 10 years, it might come out now after two years. Why? Because you're, with the help of AI and low-code, no-code tools and sparred AI-based development, as I'm describing the uh, I'm describing it superficially, um, you'll just be able to get things done much more quickly than you would have otherwise, right? So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So I think in time, in a short time, the quality of software will improve and the uh, rate of change will accelerate as well. Again, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. 
web development in 1995, 94, 96, 97, 98 was much slower. And the resulting web apps were much more primitive as they are today because we have much more sophisticated, more productive tool sets that allow for a lot less of the boilerplate code that we used to have to write before. We don't have to do it anymore. That's the whole point of a web framework, like a React, excuse me, that's uh, like a, a, uh, a PHP Laravel or uh, ExpressJS. Or we have libraries like React and Vue that allow us to be far more productive, far more productive. Again, the simple equation is to say, well, if the languages or if the AI makes it far more productive, we're going to lose jobs. Again, we're going to have a shift. But you can get ahead of it. I personally believe for developers who jump on this new type of development, I think there's a lot of opportunity. A lot of opportunity for small businesses as well. In fact, I'll leave you the, with this one last uh, little story. So I was on a consult call a few weeks ago with a startup out of Southeast Asia. And they developed a mobile app. They told me, I was talking, to, I think it was, a, it was the founder. And with his team, small team, they were able to develop a mobile app in three months, whereas without AI, it would have taken them over a year, he was telling me. Now, did this mean that he fired developers? No. It just means that he was able to get to market much more quickly. I think as an entrepreneur, if you're entrepreneurially uh, inclined, I think this is an opportunity where you can have relatively small teams being able to compete and outcompete massive corporations because with the help of AI, with proper AI development workflows, which companies are starting to adopt, uh, they're able to develop applications in a fraction of the time. So instead of having to put together 100 developers to develop your code base, you can get it done with 10. And I think it's great because anybody who's run companies knows that when you have a lot of people involved, you have this layer of organizational layer that slows down things quite a bit. Productivity on a per developer basis Drop, starts dropping quite a bit after you have three developers on a particular project. So when I would manage my little projects, I would try to keep it down to three people. I wanted three developers on a particular piece of software because otherwise it was a mess. It was not a mess. Well, it just became much slower because you got to coordinate with everybody. But AI, so AI would allow you to, to tackle projects that this big, that used to take a, a, a many more developers, now you can tackle the much bigger projects with fewer developers. Again, let me emphasize, people will say, oh, that's less jobs. In the transition period, yeah, I see people getting laid off, but I'm telling you, I'm seeing it now. I've been, uh, this week, I was in three meetings with three different AI-related startups. Not AI businesses, but business, uh, businesses, software businesses that were leveraging AI. Not only was AI speeding up workflows, but AI was also allowing for new use cases. Translation, because of AI, there were new types of apps that are being developed that, that did not exist prior, which means more opportunity. So you there, that's the AI roadmap for uh, developers. If you're a total noob, you still have to learn your basics. How long is that gonna take? H with my program, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, I learned a little PHP, client side, server side, learned a little Python, little SQL databases. Then you're ready to go. Then you're ready to go. So you're looking at me, and you don't have to use my program, whatever. Uh, you're looking at 250 to 300 hours, depending on your aptitudes, depending where you come, where you come from in, in this regard. Once you get that going, then, uh, then you can jump into the game. So to really get f fine grained with this, if you will, in terms of learning, I would learn if you're doing my course, but again, you don't have to. If you do the HTML5, do the CSS3, um, and then jump into the JavaScript. When you're halfway through the JavaScript course, I would start poking around, I guess, with chat GPT. That's the one I would l learn. And then move on from there. Use, you use chat GPT to speed up the learning process. And then you learn how chat GPT can speed up things. Um, 
you got to use the tool on a daily, daily basis, whether it be GPT or Grok or Cloud or whatever AI. And, and I don't want to, sp- I'm reluctant to mention, I'm, excuse me, I'm not going to say one AI is better than the other because you could be watching this video three months from now and some new AI, some new agent comes out and it just blows away everybody. So this is a quick moving uh, situation here, which is exciting. So, uh, yeah, just understand the AI. That's it. That's it. So once you got your basics, get into the AI space, understand it, understand the different AIs that are out there, which ones can do this, which ones can do that. It's going to be very useful to you in your career. I tell you that much. All right. I hope this is useful. I'm Uncle Steph. I've been at this, if you don't know me, since 1994 when I got, when I wrote my very first bit of commercial code. I wrote code in the early 80s, but I don't count that. I was just, you know, simple stuff for fun. Uh, so first commercial code in 94, I've developed a few web apps, SaaS apps. Uh, my last one I put out in the market, something called Studio Web, studioweb.com is a learning platform, a gamified learning platform. I developed from scratch with my little team and we deployed into many, 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 many school districts uh, over the years. So I've taken, I've conceived of, built, taken products to market on more than one occasion, a few times. And today I work with big, uh, big brands. Yeah, by the way, I just circle back. Uh, big companies like PayPal and Docker and many others are now implementing um, AI agents, uh, which is basically, um, I'll get into it in another video, but basically they're implementing AI to make developing or using their platforms so much easier opening up all kinds of new opportunities, which would be great for you as a uh, developer. Think about this. Imagine you're like a a developer. You do what, as I suggest, you learn as I suggest. And then you become uh, fairly expert at all the models that are out there. You know about Cloud, how it's good and bad, Grok, ChatGPT, the different versions of the different models in GPT. You understand how to use them effectively. You understand how to implement them into uh, a web app or a website to, to solve certain problems which you couldn't otherwise prior to AI. So you go into a job, if you want to get a job, or you go see a prospective client, or maybe you're developing your own product, and you understand this. So you can make intelligent decisions about which agents to use, how to use these ag- agents or AI models. And that just adds value to who you are as a developer. Remember, a developer develops. Uh, coding is part of development, but a developer develops, and the developer uses all the kinds of tools that are out there, including uh, databases and AI models and low-code platforms, no-code platforms, CMS systems. Uh, they understand servers. They understand the languages, of course, underneath it. There you go. That's it. If you like my long hair, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my long hair, give me two thumbs down. If you have any disagreements about anything I talk about in this video or other videos, uh, comment below. Let me know. If you like this type of video, let me know. Comment below. That's about it. Cheers, guys.